Really, let's start. Now this ICT, Information and Communication Technology, is part of our life now. You know, when, when we introduce the membership management system in the ISL, there is a drastic change. And now there is a uh, good connectivity among all the members and we have a very good network. And most of the things became very easy. Now, even a member in Australia can pay online within few seconds. So, all these facilities are there. Similarly, if we use ICT for day-to-day -to -day work at our working place, we can do our job better and better quality. It is just like uh, about 100 years before, about 200 years before, people, if the people want to go to somewhere, they have to walk. After that, the bicycle came. But bicycle problem is you should learn how to ride the bicycle. Then only you can use it. So those who learned how to ride the bicycle, they could go faster. Then after that, motorcycle came. So learning how to ride the motorcycle is more difficult than the bicycle. But those who learn that one, they could go faster. Then the other vehicles came, then the, the learning of a drive in the car is, it is more difficult. But if you learn that one, you can go safely and faster than the motorcycles. So what I want to tell here is the if you learn something properly, then you can do your job easily and better way, or the better quality. Similarly, if you know the ICT and if you know how to apply the ICT, you can do a lot of works within a very uh, little time and with a good quality. So, as engineers, we should know where we are heading, our country is heading for the ICT. Now, the best place to understand that one is the Information and Communication Technology Agency, ICTA. <coughs> You can go to the www.icta.lk website where <coughs> we have <coughs> the government's ICT policy and the ICT direction, ICT programs, everything is here. Now you can see here the, <coughs> the ICT, we have the ICT policies, ICT e-government policy. When you click this one, it will come. The ICT annual reports, workforce survey. Then the East Sri Lanka program is there. Then the Smart Sri Lanka program is there. Uh, and ICT when you go to our vision. The initiative following in initiative Smart Sri Lanka will include ensuring smart and sustainable online government services, open and responsive local government, coordinated and connected government and evidence driven policy making. And smart enterprises, high quality jobs, an attractive business environment and a globally competitive ICT BPM that is business process management sector. Building a smart and inclusive information society to build for Sri Lanka the ex extensive Nanasalat telecenter, developing relevant local language digital content. Now, uh, I want to show you something. Uh,
ICT e-government policy. Now here they have a new circle e-government policy. We can download that one. This is Singhala. <coughs> we have a document called Policy and Procedures for ICT Usage in Government, e government policy. Under that one, you have the time frame and many things. So here are the vision. The government of Sri Lanka has developed the following vision for leveraging information and communication technology for the development of the government sector. To adopt ICT in all its aspects, to make government more efficient and effective, improve access to government services and create a more citizen-centric government. So you can read this document, there are very important things are there. And the objectives are there, objects are improved efficiency and effectiveness of government organizations in Sri Lanka thereby making each government organization budget go further. Is an accessible to government information and service for citizens and other government organizations. The operational framework, enabling legal environment, electronic transactions act, computer crimes, data protection, intellectual property rights, then the ICT management, <coughs> under that ICT governance, the organization senior management structure and process shall ensure that organization ICT supports, sustain and extend the organization's goals, objectives and strategies. <coughs> then the standards. Standards will be used in government organizations for the improvement of interoperability and efficiency of the government organizations. The network application and data architectures, ICT audit, accessibility and service delivery. Government organizations shall improve citizen accessibility to government services, extending service provision beyond traditional means while complying with relevant standards as given in 0104. Contracts and information assets management, procurement and contract issues, communication interface, networking and gov connectivity, government email shall be used productively and the rules and regulations that apply to other forms of communication shall apply to email. <coughs> Web presence, government network, human resource development. Now, these are the documents referred to the policy ISO 8601, ISO 10646, IEC 171799. <coughs> now, these are the benefits of implementing e government services. Accessibility, transparency, efficacy, efficiency, and the interoperability, confidentiality, integrity, and availability, accountability. So, these are some important points of this ICT policy. Then, the, there is a situation report here. It mentions the whether these things are available, have an ICT unit, CIO has been appointed, different ministries, departments, statutories, district sector areas, divisional sector areas, provincial and local government institutions. So see this report gives the different institutions how much they introduce different areas where the guidelines were given by the 
ICT agency. <coughs> Oh. <clears throat> in the East Sri Lanka pro program, the East Sri Lanka initiative utilized information and communication technology to develop the economy of Sri Lanka, reduce poverty and improve the quality of life of the people. The vision was realized through six program strategy which encompass the program ICT policy leadership uh, leadership and industry development information infrastructure re-engineering government this is a very important point re-engineering government I don't know whether we can, you can see it uh, Uh, but you can refer this document. The government, private sector and the other stakeholders in the nation's development shared the belief that ICT is the bedrock upon which we could build a society with equitable distribution of opportunity and knowledge. ICT is a key determinant to the, of the competitive advantage of nations. Significant progress has been made under the East Sri Lanka development project with ICT implemented. So, here you can see government how much prominence is given for the ICT. So, as engineers, how much ICT we should use. So, if you think by yourself, the usage of the ICT by yourself for the your organizations, we can say it is very, very minimal. So, if we use the ICT properly, then the, our knowledge can be updated and we can do everything very fast and we can do a better service. Our designs and other things can be do in a better way with the, the available tools. So in that way, a lot of things can be done. So if your organization wants to have a very good ICT enabled organization, what are things to be satisfied? One is the connectivity. The organization should have a very good connectivity. Then we should have some idea about the what are the how your organization can be connected. The mainly you need the access network technologies. You need the high bandwidth access network te technologies for the connectivity. Nowadays we know most most all most all our hopes have the ADSL connectivity. From ADSL we can give about 1 megabit per second speed or the even 16 megabit per second speed. The problem is when the distance is increasing, the speed is decreasing. So that is the inherent feature of the ADSA. But nowadays the fiber to the home is providing, where you can go up to even 100 megabit per second speed. So if you can get the FTTH connectivity to your organizations, you can have very high bandwidth connectivity. Then after the connectivity, what you need? You need the servers to have your data. Now, the you need a database management system, then the, you have to have application software, then a the lot of types of software to be maintained. Then you have to buy the hardware. Then you need the administration, management. So manage these hardware and software, many IT stuff. Then the, every five years, we have to replace this hardware. So therefore, you have to spend a lot of money for the hardware. Actually, these things are happened because the, these, uh, these suppliers or the manufacturers, they wanted to earn money from these systems. But however, now the things are changing. Now we are going to the cloud-based environment. We are the, our hardware is in the cloud. Our software is in the cloud. We need only the internet connectivity, high bandwidth connectivity. Then you don't want the IT staff to manage your net network or you don't, you don't want the IT staff to manage your databases or the application software. Lot of money can be uh, saved by going to the cloud-based systems. So they are, for you should know what is cloud-based system and what are the applications available for you in the cloud system. Now for instance, the, consider very simple application words. If you get a word package, license package, it's a considerable amount of money. 
But if you go to the Office 365 and go to the cloud-based software, its cost is very, very minimal when compared to the normal license-based software. So therefore, the, everything is in the cloud and we can use the cloud-based systems. Even your company information and everything can be stored in the cloud-based system. So when you go to the ICT, so one problem is the one important thing is the information. Your reliability of the information or the availability of the information. Therefore, we should have a backup systems. We have to take the backups, we have to have the backup servers to maintain the reliability and the availability of your soft uh, your data or the information. But if you go to the cloud-based systems, you don't want all these things because the cloud supplier will look after all these things. Backups, everything is looked after by them. Therefore, we need to just get the cloud-based the solutions only. Now you can see a lot of money can be saved by it that way. Another important thing is the security of the data. When the data is in a cloud or in a server or somewhere, if somebody access to that data, then the, the your whole business can be bankrupted if the somebody get the information, information about your company. Or if the data is corrupted, so you may not be able to do anything because you are completely dependent on that data. So then we have to think about the backups and the different ways of keeping the backups. But if you go to the cloud environment, so data security also there. Then the, when we are, sh this information is shared by all em employment. Then another important thing to be considered is the information security policy. So nowadays, each and every every institution or the organization needs to have an information security policy. Otherwise, the, even you automate everything, there can be big problems in the future. So therefore, please study about the information security policy and there are standards for these things, ISO 27001, like that. For everything there are standards, you can, you can learn these standards and you can have information security policy for your organization. Another thing is the business continuity plan. Any input, nowadays any organization should have their own business continuity plan. So they have the information security policy, business continuity plan, all these things are very important things for any organizations nowadays. You can go to the ICT, you can use the IT as a technology or the tool, but you have to consider all these other these things also, otherwise many problems can be faced. So <coughs> then the, the latest concept is the smart concept. <coughs> because we are going to have the intelligent devices nowadays. So device will decide what we will do. Now along with the intelligent devices, this smart concept came. Now in the internet, nowadays we can connect anything to the internet if we have the devices to connect any device. For instance, in your home, at home, if you have something, say that your gas cylinder, it is, we sometimes we found suddenly it is empty. But if you can get SMS to you, or any message to you when it is 80% empty, that will be very useful to you. So if you can see what is happening at home, for so security wise, if you can see the security camera from your phone, so that will be very useful. So therefore nowadays many things are getting automated, that is called the smart concept. We have home, we can have many things automated, that is called smart home. In our education systems also should go to a big transformation, we should use the technology. So most of the examinations we can give the online results. Now tomorrow our A-levels exam will be started. So all the multiple choice questions can be online and they instantly can be given the results. So that we, from that we can save a lot of money, a lot of paper and the quality will be increased. And the education systems can use the ICT and the knowledge of the students can be enhanced considerably. And even the parents if they want to know what is happening at the classroom, 
So you can online monitor these things. And they can do the assignments by using the different techniques, technologies, tools. So those things are very useful. Now consider the chemistry. So we learn the chemistry by just looking at the pictures. But if you can have the animations and understand animations and learn, that is very, very useful. So the we have the e-learning systems are coming and the normal tuition class will disappear very soon and the students can learn at any time to go to the e-learning systems and it will be very effective. Then the the knowledge difference between the the popular schools and the remote school will be disappear. So the there will be equality among every all students when you apply the smart education systems. Similarly to the health sector. So health sector remote areas, the we do the consultant does not want to go there. So the from the devices we can check the blood pressure, sugar, all these things and the scan scan the brain and these results can be online given to the consultant. He may be in the town. So he will go through the reports and he can give the medicine to the remote place from the town. So then the also the when the uh, when a patient patient history nowadays we you go to the doctor we have to tell the beginning what are the diseases you have and what are the treatments you have taken but if there is a database then the history of the patients can be obtained and also if we can online measure the blood pressure if there is a fluctuation of the blood pressure or the increase of the blood pressure the doctor may notice from his office that so then he may send you the SMS so he will give some medicine so he gives some advice to you how to reduce that term. So likewise the, our health sector also transform into the smart. So that is the smart health. Similarly almost all the sectors are becoming smart and all the cities are becoming smart. If you want to park your car you can reserve a parking slot before you go there. And if it is a very large park institute, you can have some methods to find out where is your car, where you park. So everything is becoming very, very easy once this smart concept goes. So the ICT agency introduced the smart Sri Lanka. So it says the implementation of the East Sri Lanka development project ICT agency of Sri Lanka has resulted in significant progress in the ICT sector. Building on the results, success and lessons learned from the East Sri Lanka development project, Sri Lanka is ready to undertake the Next stage of ICT development, the Enfisage follow on initiative while using the foundation built on the East Sri Lanka development project will have greater focus on smart and sustainable online government service, responsive local government, high quality jobs, accelerated growth, etc., widespread of e-literacy connectivity, all these things. So the, from the, when you go to the ICT agency website, you can get a lot of information. Another important uh, website is the Telecom Regulatory Commission of Sri Lanka www.trc.gov.lk gov .lk. <coughs> and the, they have the different policies and <coughs> frequency allocation policy, numbering policy, tower policy and the, the also the, the they will monitor the connectivity speeds and other things internet connectivity and the, they give the uh, instruction to the operators what are the speeds to be maintained and also the we know our spectrum frequency spectrum is a resource to the country and they look after the allocation of frequency spectrum to the operators in effective manner. Now we know that in the mobile uh, communication 2G came, then after 2G, 3G came, now the 4G is there. But the 4G comes, it is the IP enabled technology where you can have the high speed connectivity with the mobility. So then the again the, with the Wi-Fi source you can have a very the about 100 meter radius connectivity without wire that is wireless. So if you are in a one place, <coughs> if you are not uh, moving by a vehicle or if you are going, not going faster, then you can use the Wi-Fi source connectivities. 
and if if you are moving you can go to the mobile connectivity such as LTE. Now the <coughs> these policies and the very important matters are in the TRCSL website. Uh, <coughs> You can go to this one and the, the speed tests are there, broadband speed test. You can see the, from, by using this uh, software you can test your broadband connectivities. And the, <coughs> uh, now they have a symposium on cloud computing, so the, you have to have a, uh, be in touch with these two organizations when you are developing the ICT. So that is the ICT agency and the Telecommunication Regulatory Commission of Sri Lanka. Now I just give a, a, some overview of the ICT and then now I hand over to Arjuna to more elaborate in many areas and the, how the ICT can be used as engineers in a productive manner. My name is Arjuna Manamperi. I am the sectional chair for the uh, Mechanical Engineer Sectional Committee Council member. Uh, this is the second or the third time I am partnering with Tilak De Silva, our former president, to uh, give some in insight to information and communication technology. I would like you to open your minds and be prepared to unlearn. U N L E A R A. Unlearn. Be prepared to unlearn, not to learn. Unlearn. Okay. Second, I want all of you to take something today, whether it is a B paper lecture or not. I would like you to take something home today so you can apply the knowledge you gained at home with your family to start with. And then of course in your company tomorrow morning and your organization and in the country in the years to come. The getting the day B paper getting through the B paper is a something you should do anyway. Are you okay with that agenda? We are here to learn something so that it can be made use of to you, you to have a, a productive life and a productive organization and a productive country. I'm going to speak in English because there may be others who are not necessarily uh, con conversant with a Sinhala language. Uh, had I known Tamil, I would have conducted this lecture in Tamil and Sinhala so that we can get our points across. Yeah. So welcome online viewers, I don't know whether it's good morning or good, good evening on the, your side of the country or the world, but uh, nevertheless uh, I urge you to also learn something new so you can take it back to your houses, homes and loved ones and co companies and, and organizations that make a, make a difference. Be prepared for a question where I will ask you these five areas in case that question is given to you. It, there will be a business case and I will ask how you plan to apply information and communication technology. The first part is that you will have to recognize your business challenge. Listen to me very carefully because this is part of the lecture. In order to implement ICT, you must understand your business issues very well. Okay? You forget the IT part, but understand the business challenge that you are going to solve using ICT. So, the question will request you to write it down very clearly. Secondly, it will ask you to tell which type of ICT tools you are going to use to solve that particular challenge or problem. What are the types of ICT tools? You'll have to name them and describe them and tell this is what I'm planning to use to solve the problem. Okay? So you, have, you know that your business problem now what tools you have. Then, how will you put all of these tools and everything together to come up with a unified solution? Look at the unified solution again. What is a unified solution? Unified solution means that you cannot have something dangling from there, dangling from there. Everything must connect to each other and must make sense. One, how do you plan to implement these solutions? Because I will be talking about all those things today in the lecture. How do you plan to implement your solution in the company? This is not like solving mathematics problems, my friends. Because mathematics, you get the mathematics problem, you sit, you take your calculator, your brain, and you solve the problem and you are done. But implementing ICT or solutions in organizations or for that matter at home is a challenging task. So you have to write how you plan to implement the solution that you are proposing. Last but not least, you will have to come up with rough estimate about the cost of implementation. 
What I am asking is to come up with an estimate of rough cost or investment you will have to come up with. So first, what is the business problem you are trying to solve? Secondly, what are the IC tools that you plan to use? Specific, you have to be very specific. And thirdly, how all of them will come together for a unified solution? Sampurna Katandare. Thirdly, how do you plan to implement it? Because you are implementing with people. And people, the question will be about widely dispersed group of people. So, how do you do that? How do you train people, etc. Last year, the thing that you didn't understand is the cost. Something you really should understand, right? Estimated cost. Got it? Yes? Okay. Now, time to learn. There are three things I will cover. Right. So, we are very young engineers and very experienced engineers. Very good. I congratulate those senior engineers who have decided to go through the chart and get it. It's wonderful to see that happening. And I also congratulate young engineers who have decided to get the chart as soon as possible. So, congratulations to all of you and let me up front wish you all the best because the B paper is something you should be able to pass. I don't see why we have such a big issue about this. You should be able to pass this B paper. Three things I will cover in this lecture. They are I will talk about Sri Lanka. I think I covered some of it, but I will get to the real uh, key points about Sri Lankan government, Sri Lanka's ICT strategy, where we are and where we are going. Because as leaders, you must understand that. Because you work, whether you work in the private sector or public sector, within that context. You know that we all do these things for the country, the economy, all these things comes together. So therefore, you need to understand where is the country heading. Not only that, you need to understand where are we as a country uh, when compared with other countries where they use ICT. Then I will discuss some tools, <laughs> some specific tools, not a lot, but some very, very useful tools that you can put to practice even right now as I speak. Thirdly, I will talk about the most important thing as far as I am concerned for you guys that is to how do you make ICT decisions as a leader because I am currently working with a large government sector organization, a leader who has been struggling to do that for the last two years. I am trying to help this individual from a government sector, very very old government organization, very old, all of you are older than that, your fathers are younger than that organization. Then I'm also working with a num top, um, one of the top five private sector organizations, again, trying to get ICT implemented, private sector, very rich company, full lot of money, but struggling for the past four years to get ICT solutions implemented in the organization. I'm working with these two examples. Why did I say that? Because Getting an information and communication technology solutions are paramount to an organization in the 21st century. You must do it, but getting it done is not an easy, easy task. It's quite challenging. So we are going to learn how to make some basic decisions through as leaders when it comes to ICT decisions. Okay? Right. Framework is very clear, right? As leaders, it's not about doing the things right. It is deciding what is right to be done. As leaders, we must decide what is right to be done. This is why I said be prepared to unlearn when it comes to ICT because you are going to do a lot of things that are non-traditional. You have to have a framework when, I, when you listen to a lecture. So I created the framework. I told you what the question is going to be, roughly. I told you what I am going to cover, the three areas. And I told you to keep your minds open and be prepared to, be prepared to unlearn as we go so that you can make the best use of knowledge that you are gathering. Let's start with, uh, let's start with uh, government strategy or Sri Lanka strategy in terms of ICT. Let me quote, rather read something that just came out. In 2013, year 2013, that was two years ago, ICT exports revenue, that is value addition, that's great. Exports, right? So you, you really bring money home. Sri Lanka's IT exports was 790 million US dollars in 2013. 
it's important number to remember because if you go back to some other industries, after being around for 50 years, they don't make that kind of exports. Go back and study. Go to Central Bank website and find out how much rubber we sell and how much coconut we sell and then you compare it with this number because ICT exports have been going on for the last 5 or 6 years, more or less. We have already touched 719 million US dollars in year 2013 exports. Value added. That's money coming in. The sector, the ICT sector saw a growth of 123% in the last 5 years and I myself have witnessed that because I am in the field of ICT as well. So I do agree with these numbers, there is tremendous growth in the ICT field in Sri Lanka. The Sri Lankan government, whether they are green, blue or red or whatever the color they are, elections are coming up, right? They all talk about ICT, if you listen to the TV and newspapers and everything and they are actually extensively using ICT. Do you get SMSs from a vote to so and so? Do you get? Yes. So, they are, they are put it to use. Sri Lankan government expects ICT exports, ex, exports to reach 5 billion dollars by year 2022. Within 6 years, they expect to go to 5 billion US dollars. That is almost by 500 times more than what we are doing today. And that's a staggering amount. What is the Sri Lanka's GDP, gross domestic product? Madam? Chandakala. Okay, I know. Kau dene. Atau usal again. Jati ke dollar nishpaad ne ki hai. What's the Sri Lanka's GDP in US dollars? In current rates, that means prevailing dollar rates. I think it's hovering around about 75 now. 72 to 75 US billion. Billions, huh? billions of dollars. Billions. So, 5, 5 billion out of 75, 80 is not bad. I mean, that's pretty significant sum of money coming to the country through uh, ICT exports. So, that's a big picture. Not only that, you hear these days, some politicians are saying that they will create how many, how many jobs? You heard it today morning. You saw it on newspaper. How many jobs? Huh? How many? I, I don't know how, but uh, the, the, now the, the Sri Lanka expect to create about 200,000 direct jobs and 1,000 startups by year 2022. 200,000 jobs and 1,000 startups. Now here comes the kicker. In, the, in ICT, it's not about building these massive concrete buildings and putting 10,000 people from nowhere suddenly. Few talented people get together, create something simple, remarkable. For example, Hotmail. Hotmail was invented, uh, created by an Indian guy, one guy in 90s. Okay? So, few people get together and create a lot of value in ICT. That is the magical thing about ICT. So, not, not, there won't be a lot of jobs, but there will be about 200,000 jobs they expect and about 1,000 starts of a lot of small companies. To share a little experience why I am standing here and delivering this lecture to you. When I moved to USA in 1989, there was no internet as we know. There was nothing called internet. There was nothing called www. There were no emails that the public could use. There was no Yahoo. There was no Google. There was no Apple iPhones or iPads, 1989. When was the uh, World Wide Web, was in, when did they introduce World Wide Web? Anybody? www.kinakaal.com 19? Yeah, theoretically 91, became very popular around 1993. It was a very big deal to have an email address those days. I have one of those emails, my Yahoo email address was created in 1992, I believe. So. We have come a long way after 22 years, after 20 some years, maybe 90, 89, 90, 2000, 2000, after three decades. Are we in information revolution or something else? We had the industrial revolution, we had the agricultural revolution. Are we in information revolution or something else? Right now. We had, there was a thing called information revolution in the past. I'm asking the young gentleman here in this third row. Yes? Are we still in it? Are we still in it? No, not necessarily. 
we have embarked on what they call knowledge revolution now now we have just entered the knowledge revolution because information is power from that power we gather knowledge and we are now in the information knowledge revolution just started the knowledge revolution that is why knowledge workers so called knowledge workers are becoming very important information is now available of success right so let's get to our three things that we want to discuss uh, i already started uh, talking about government initiatives but let me share something very important with you in sri lanka we have a census bureau right government census bureau they have been doing a survey every year now they have done it three times the last one was done in 2014 like a part of the year this is a very good one um, look at that it's very interesting very fascinating one where sri lanka has come in the journey of ict journey let's see very quickly if we go here table 1 the story line is they have uh, they have put numbers from 2004 so 10 years ago the bottom line is this and they are comparing 2009 and 2014 the number of per the percentage of our population households huh? what's the difference between a household and a population your wife your husband your children all put together becomes a household yourself is a citizen of the country so this is about household in sri lanka 22% of the 20 almost 23% of the households have a computer at home do you agree with this how many of you don't have a computer at home right here in the room now because most likely you should have a, been given a computer uh, in, in your job then look at this one computer owned households by the year of the first acquisition koi kaal ka mai mai hari badega look at this when have this so if you take 100 people household members and ask them when did you purchase the first computer or the computer that they first computer look at the numbers in sri lanka most of the purchases has taken place between 2010 and 2014 does that make sense to you does that make sense to you the growth of computer tech use of computers are increasing between 2010 and 2014 now this is very important for you i assure you i guarantee you and i will show you some interesting videos we'll take about 645 yeah like athati varu karanna ban you will be fascinated to see how many of us will be using computers in the in another 5 years time i assure you lot of them most of the most majority of the sri lankans will be using some form of a computer whether it is a smartphone or a ipad or some kind of a tablet or a laptop or a desktop in fact most people will go to more mobile devices I guarantee you that this number will be about 75% within 5 years time. I can really see that the rapid growth is taking place because I experience that all the time. Here's another interesting statistics. Keep this in mind, okay? Because you have to put it in context. What does this mean to you guys? Sir, the gentleman with the yellow light yellow shirt. Yes, the question is to you. You look like Aravind De Silva. Ne, photo ke vage cricket ka, right? Tikka ke vage. Aravind De Tiya gaha gatte bari daas photo ke vai inne de. Right. <laughs> right. What does this mean to you as a where do you work, sir? Where do you work? Building services. Building services. Where? Building services. The government organization, right? No. Okay. So, what is the name of the company? BSP. BSP. Oh, that's name of the company itself is building services. Great. Okay. Uh, what does this mean to you? when when we can clearly see growth of computer usage is inc dramatically increasing in sri lanka in the starting from 2010 onwards what does this mean to you strategically as a leader that's why we are here that's the kind of a question you should be asked not it questions why who wants to answer that question you have an answer for that your name please pradeep, pradeep do you have an answer for that quick answer Now this is why I said we have intelligence when we are born. We also get a lot of knowledge. They have to practice it. That I am telling again. Then interview it. They have to pass. Now, what do you have to do? Manage it. Can you read it? Can you read it? What do you have to do? Can you pull it? Pass it. Who wants to take the challenge? What does it mean for you? What does this mean? Think strategically. You want to answer? Everyone has access to to the ICT device. Everyone will be beginning to have access to ICT device. So the way you do things in your organization, the way you reach out, the way you market, the way you collaborate, the way you do projects, the way you write, the uh, way you look up knowledge, everything will change dramatically in Sri Lanka. I mean, today in the political circles, they talk about the one million or one point two million voters who voted 
for their current president through Facebook and all that. Where do you think they did their political discussions? Through Facebook. They don't even know each other. Whether you like it or not, that's how they do it. I personally don't like it. I rather like to have a face-to-face discussion, put a gori and dhagana, khadya, pushagana, parma talavage, karan. But the youngsters are not doing that. So understand the strategic importance of ICT. ICT is coming, it is coming very, very fast. We are late to the party, we are very late to the party. You know, the, our neighbor India is a juggernaut. What is a juggernaut? It's a massive IT force. In the, in the world, all the major software companies are in India. Their major design houses are in India. Microsoft, SAP, Oracle, you name it, they are all there. If you want to know about IT, go to India. Just take a weekend ticket and go visit places like Madras, Chennai, Bombay, Hyderabad and places like that. You don't have to go to the Silicon Valley anymore. If you go below this to the low, lower graph, look at this. This is the graph. What does it say? Household computer ownership. May Western province the highest, North Central province, least amount of computers, Uwe, I think this is Uwe area, probably. So this is where we need to improve. The rest of the areas are coming up pretty good, equally, except uh, Western, uh, Western pro province has more computers, right? Now the computer literacy. The computer literacy is defined as anybody who can do anything, including a kid who can play game. Uh, 2006 to 2007, look at the growth, 2009 and 2014. Obviously, Western countries have, the Western province has 35% literacy rate. The next one is Southern, interesting, and then Northwestern. Sabragamune, Northwestern can. Northwestern can? One. One, one. Right? So this is where things are. These are important information because in your company, when you try to plan and expand your computer activities into other parts of the world, this is a very important document for you to have. Number five, computer literacy rates of employed population by occupation, 2014. Very fresh statistics. Just ask yourself, do you agree or not? Sri Lanka, professionals are come see the Panak Kitra, manage the gap, manage the Nayak gap, manage the library gap, see the Panak Kitra, computer school one. Where do you know what you Professionals, that is engineers like ourselves, technicians, clerks, and clerical support workers, and managers. I don't agree with these statistics. It depends on where you are born. You know, when you ask a person, do you know about computers? It depends on what you ask. If you ask a person, can you turn on the computer and send an email? If you say yes to that, and if you think that is computer literacy, yes. Almost everybody who works in a company these days can do that. But can you use computers to analyze problems? Can you do 3D designing? Can you do uh, the, the, what do you call solid modeling? Can you do finite element analysis? Can you use uh, various uh, Fourier analysis techniques using computers? Can you use uh, facilities planning software to do layout uh, factories? Can you use uh, various software to do, as Tilak said, chem chemical engineering processes. Can you use uh, software to collaborate uh, across the world? Can you use a software to uh, work with 100 people to create a single document in 15 minutes? Can you talk to the millions of people with a message? Can you say, yes, 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 I know, to the answers? Then you are completely literate by modern day standards. If you say you are email capable, where do you stand? And nothing else. Monal Dingwa. Mangiwa, exact name sir, Anu Pune, okay. So don't get overly carried away by these numbers, okay? You are an engineer, you are the best in the country in terms of the education and the ability to learn. You are an intelligent group of people. So set your standards right. That's why I am making this point. I am not laughing at our own people. I am asking you to understand the reality of the situation and make sure that your level is far above than the statistics says. That's the point I am trying to make. How do you find my information as a member? Because all members are allowed to find my information unless I don't want to show them to you. There are a lot of directories. You go, you can go to member directory find it. You can go to chartered engineer directory find it because I am a chartered engineer. You can go to the mechanical engineer sectional committee directory. You can go to various places and find out. That is why created. So me, see, this is the problem. This is why you are outdated. You are outdated. You are here. I'm serious because I really want you to step up to the plate. That is why you have come for this ICT lecture. You have come here because you want to get through the chart somehow other, just like you got through the other exam. Don't do that. Don't do that. We have spent a lot of energy ourselves, myself, Tilak, and people in the ISS staff 
our council members, everybody. We have worked very hard to give this kind of technology and information to you. And you all are not using. You are asking dumbest questions over and over and over and again. None of you should ever approach me personally and ask for my phone number and email address. Never should you ever do that because it's already available. Did you read the digital strength that came to your email box today? Did you know it came? I know you do sir. You are regular. How many of you saw an email coming to your email box, our digital strength? Like ISL like a newsletter. So what is going on with you guys? You have to go to www.isl.myisl, go to your profile and make sure you are getting email subscription to yourself so that you get newsletters, events and etc. You go to this particular document, it is on Census Bureau website, 2014 ICT survey. They do it every year, very important survey. It is strategically important to you as managers and leaders of organization, whether you are in the private sector or public sector. If you can't see that, then you should not be a manager or a leader. The society is changing dramatically. Your future employees all will be with computers whether you like it or not or whatever. They will be using it. Okay. It's very simple like this. Let's watch this. A video clip. The Google Loom concept is what they are doing. I can, I, I, because of the time pressure, I, I will try to time to time put a small clip or so. What they are doing is they are sending a balloon. It's a huge plastic balloon. Underneath is a device that can give Wi-Fi connectivity. It is powered by solar energy. So when the Google started this particular project in 2013, this is new guys, brand new. They started this, they could only build one balloon a day. They have already built factories where they can build about 15, uh, sorry, about 1,500 balloons a day. They have automated the whole process. It's all solar powered and everything. What they do is they send these balloons to stratosphere. So go to www.google.com slash loom, L -O, o N and watch a couple of videos. I don't have time to show it. If I have time, I will show it to you. So Google is coming and they are already working on it. May MOU has been signed and hopefully all of us can start using, as Silak said, your smartphone in the middle of nowhere. How about that? Farmers. Now think about it guys, think about as leaders, what does that mean to you? Think about the villages that don't have access to knowledge. Think about the villages like Hindira Kadu, farmers, doctors, patients, uh, right? If you are a Buddhist, 
पांचवें पलस जाते के में तीन आई वेब्बे के जंदा है तो पांचवें पलस जाते के में क्यों बंद करो चीजें पास नहीं करते लास्ट टाइम ने लती है ना यदि मैं उत्तम आपने करने पूरा मैं कनेक्टिविटी कहाँ रहा सो दूसरा समाधे स्ट्रेटजीज़ इन टर्म्स ऑफ़ ग्लोबल स्ट्रेटजी वन आवरिंग आईसीटी स्ट्रेटजी के ने कता करने � our private sector and public sector are heavily into this one. Uh, particularly, the government is really pushing it. Between 2000 and 2014, the growth of ICT is huge in this country, phenomenal growth. Already about 30% of the families in the 25% of the families around the country are covered, households are covered with computers. Internet is becoming very, very prominent. Government politics are done through Facebook. Regime changes have taken place as a result of Facebook, whether you like it or not. Open communication, transparency, knowledge is coming fast. So just because you are the boss, you don't have the knowledge. The knowledge is with the one who seek. So get ready, get dynamic, get up to speed with information technology, and don't tell me next time when I meet you, you don't know how to find my phone number. In 10 minutes or so, I'm going to spend time on introducing you three to four two. How many of you use Dropbox? D-R-O-P, B-O-X. Great, put your hand up all the way up. How many of you use Dropbox? All the way up, okay. Roughly about 30% use that. How many of you use Google Drive? Put your hand up, please. Okay. How many of you use Asana? Asana. Asana is again. Asana. How many of you use Basecamp? How many of you have used Trello? No, right? None of you have used it. Never heard of it. Anybody who has heard these words? Asana, Basecamp, Trello. Okay. So we are going to learn something which is very, very powerful. One of the, one of the common challenges as engineers, right? We, I think you all agree to this one. We have to work, work in remote locations with remote teams. Actually, it's increasingly becoming global. How many of you work with uh, organizations that are located outside Sri Lanka? Yes. And how many hands went up? One, two, three. But here's the point. I'm going to uh, give, introduce you to two great collaborating modern project management tools that is available in the cloud. One is free. Of course, you can pay some money, rent it, and then get more features. Other one, you have to, after a 60-day trial period, you have to rent it. <coughs> How many of you handle projects? Hmm? Right. What is the real challenge in projects today? How many of you prepare grant charts, by the way? Microsoft project charts in the hand? Ghana. Very I know that you gave up. This is how they work, I tell you what. No one understands how to create a project Ghana chart in Microsoft, so somebody wastes about six months to create one. The project has already started and once you create it and once you bring it to the office, because some big shot think that is the way to do the project, you bring it and talk about it. The moment you leave the office, that plan has all changed. Because life goes on. Then you meet after six months, no one can understand what the hell has happened because your grand chart says one thing, they, they, the whole story is different. Am I right or wrong? In real life, in practical terms, we have to get decisions done very fast. You can't wait for it. But the people who have the answers may be at remote locations. So how do you collaborate? That's the idea of a collaborative project management tools like Basecamp or Trello. Now let me show you base camp. This is very useful, huh? So pay attention to this one. Very, very useful. I hope the connectivity is there. So base camp is a cloud-based solution. You go there, you pay a credit card. Roughly it costs you about $9. I don't know. ISL uses this, our council uses this. Tilak and I uses for ISL projects. A lot of people are using in ISL, this particular one. Um, and I'm logging into my Basecamp account. You can have multiple Basecamp account, but you can only you, you only need one one uh, uh, password and username. Very simple. You can set this up like that. In one minute, you can go there, use a credit card, and get into the trial. Six, there's a 60-day trial period for this one, and you can try it out. This is the one of the the oldest probably. This is the, one of the oldest or probably the oldest collaborative web-based cloud-based 
collaborative project management tool in the world, to my knowledge. So this is very well tested. This is considered to be the baseline, you know, the, the real thing, the serious stuff. Sri Lankans have begun to use this uh, and go to anywhere in the world. I have internet connection. I am in touch with all the projects that I do in the world, including Sri Lanka and abroad, because I do some activities with foreign countries. They may not be shown here, but I do. And all my activities can be accessed and communicate and do everything with people. I used, I am a CIO, not for currently, but I used to be a CIO. We used to do global projects, billion dollar global projects. We used to work in teams of 300, 500 people across the world. We have never seen any one of them it, until from the beginning to the end of the project, except for one or two key people. And we get them done on time. We cannot afford to delay the projects. So we have done this hundreds of times in the past decade or so. So here is the one for the ISL. Um, I'm just going in there. This is the one the council uses. Um, or we are attempting to get the council to use. Some of us use, some of us still getting to know that. Very simple. When you get into a base camp account, what you do is you create your projects. These are projects, staff train, review, random transfer, sign ISL IT team. So here is the one where I am going through the CEB review for the charter process. So myself and another chairman, mechanical uh, agriculture and plantation sector is working with me. We work with the mem membership department and we have a client, CEB general man, uh, AGM, Mr. Engineer Baduge, working with us. So we can invite these people with different rights. Okay. So Baduge will be able to see what we allow him to see as a client. The way you do that is this. You go to one of those projects. All will be listed. You uh, you have to do's. I don't use this, right? So what you can do is you have to do's. That these are the, dis the you can have discussions. You can immediately type something and you can have emails coming into your email box. And when the email comes to you, what will happen is you can immediately reply to that email. If you don't want log into the system, the email will go and get posted. So you are in America. You, somebody else in Sri Lanka, you have a challenge and you send it, somebody in the world will come back to help you out. I don't know this. Most of the IT guys work like this because the answers are not with them always. They, they globally send it out and globally they get answers. You can do the same thing. You don't have to go from here for a meeting. How many hours do you waste on a given day at meetings? It's a waste of time. This application can be available on a smartphone, Android or iPhone or any of these things. And also it can be available on laptop or web anywhere. So it's very powerful too. So you create your to-dos, you assign a name, person's names and a date. And, and it get, get assigned to people and you can also know, for example, let me go to a to-do here. This is a to-do I have assigned to our IT administrator, Kalana. So what I have done here, I have created this, every day, the, the log, log is already there. Now I can add a comment, I can add some comments here. Okay, and also I can... Uh, I can, now uh, when I add a to-do, if I add a to-do, I, time is up, yeah, I know, <coughs> what is important, I, we, have, we have a meeting to go anyway, um, I will take a few more minutes, okay, because you have to take something out of this, so these are the, this tool allows you to collaboratively manage, it's called Basecamp, uh, you can add a to-do, you can assign a person's name, and give a de deadline, you can attach files, you can do everything, so everything is available. So if you are a project, me project member, you can see everything. If you are a client, you are allowed to see only what you want to show. If the project member goes away, you can take that person out. Rapid collaboration, rapid movement of things, things that you do with phones, etc., all can be done here. So this is a powerful tool that you should use. The other one is Trello. Let me show this to you, Trello. Very simple, guys, okay? I don't have to go through a big class to teach you Basecamp. You get into Basecamp, use it. That's and Arsene is another one, go ahead and look it up. I will recommend Basecamp for serious work and Trello the other one. Trello is the other one, very cool one, this is very fancy. What Trello will look like, very simple. When you log into Trello, again, it's a free, it's a free software. If you want additional features, you have to pay. Basecamp is free for 60 days and after that few dollars, less than $10 per person or some very small amount. Trello is free for you to use the base version. The Trello works like this, what you are looking at is a board. This is a board, consider board as a project. So Trello, for a good organization, you can create an account and the, the boards are Trello boards. So you have project 1, project 2, project 3, anyone in the, in the organization can create boards or the administrator can create board, boards. And once you create a board, you create lists. These are ideas to do, doing, done, parties, meetings, you can create lists. Inside the list, you can add cards. These are cards. Cards can be an assignment word. Somebody's name can be put in there. Date and time can be put there. Or it can be some answer to a question. You can, you can, you can imagine all kinds of things that can be done. These are very free-flowing software that you can be used to. Very powerful tools. 
Very easy. This also can be carried in a smartphone, iPad, laptop, computer, or you can go to any internet cafe and you access it. So look into Trello and Basecamp when you go back home tonight and tomorrow morning use one of them in your companies because I guarantee you if not the company at home you can use it because you have a project in your home your wife's project, your husband's project, your children's project, your dog's project, whatever the project, your grandfather's, mother's, father's projects so you can have a Trello board and, and have a uh, list father, mother, son, daughter, dog, puppy, giraba, okkamadagana, project in the dhala, very simple this is how people get a lot of things done idea the key idea is this we must collaborate rapidly we must not be disturbed by phone calls we should only be signal make a jamana pasha manga balagini inna ma taggala message ekena apuga mata tenna and meeti mat kina tata deki yanna kiyala and it is collaborative you already have your calendars but this is collaboration everybody knows where things are so people can look at up and say okay so and so is at a meeting right so trello and uh, base camp look it up Powerful, powerful. ISL has two Twitter accounts. One is at ISL Lanka. At IESL Lanka. If you take your phone right now, some of you should do this courageously. If you have a, a Mobitel, a, a Airtel, a Hutch, or whatever, and even dial up, type, type follow at IESL Lanka. Follow a for L L O W space at sign IESL Lanka and send it to number 40404 from that moment onwards any event that has been on the website any any lecture any of these information will start coming to you via sms without get costing you any money similarly there's a my uh, cha, my sectional committee at iesl underscore not hyphen underscore mesc will bring you all the information from lot of knowledge and etc from how many of you follow these two now read the ISL digital screen that came to you today because I have written about this how to use this now why am I mentioning this if you want rapid communication if you want rapid communication in a project let's say you have a project called uh, name a project huh? project project whatever now you can create a twitter account in one minute you go to twitter free account Call at Dutugamu. Now you tell everybody in your project to follow at Dutugamu. So you can type to 40404 text, it will distribute to everybody else. Gloria Potoda. Right? Drachma Nevilane, Mama Ada Sanipa, Mata Malagia, Hetak Malagia, Anita Babunga, Emana Pedian Zaman Schedule, right? Anita Po anyone. Right? So Twitter do not want to have that. High and old, Mama, they need that. They need that. Click the gallery. I need that. Done. Right. So use Twitter. That is why. Although I am telling this to you very fast. Go to www.twitter.com. Create your Twitter account. Follow some good Twitters. It is the fastest way. If you are following Hindi actors or sportsmen, Sandakka, everybody, they all have this. President has it. Former president has it. Please start using Twitter. For the moment, I am telling you to be careful. Over there, you can only type 140 characters. Young hell, you have to back. 140 characters is coming from the region. You can put a link and everything. Please go to today's digital screen. I have written about this in detail. Take a look at it and start following at IESL Lanka and start following at IESL, IESL, sorry, IESL underscore MESC because I put a lot of knowledgeable information to that. And I'm going to send the question to the B paper from one of the links I put there. So you have to go to that tonight and follow at IESL underscore MESC. There is a link that shows the demographic numbers for United States of America compared to Sri Lanka. The reason why I want you to take a look at that infographics from USA because people think USA is all this advanced and computerized country. So get the perspective of that. In a, in, I'll tell you a few things. Lanka Matamai. Just like in Sri Lanka, poor people have less access to computers than rich people. People living in cities have more access to computers than people living in rural areas. Younger generation use more computers than the older generation. What is the message? Apiokkoma 
ಹೌದು ರಾಜ್ಯ ಉಣ್ಣಿ ಮನುಷ್ಯ ಅಪಿ ಉಕ್ಕೋ ಮನುಷ್ಯ ಸುದು ಉಣ ದುಂಬರು ಉಣ ಕಾಳು ಉಣ ವಾಟ್ ಎವರ್ ದ ಕಾಲ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಹ್ಯೂಮನ್ ಬೀಂಗ್ಸ್ ಹೂ ಲವ್ ಈಚ್ ಅದರ್ ನೋ ಮ್ಯಾಟರ್ ವೇ ಆರ್ ವಿ ಲೀವ್ ಅಂಡ್ ವಾಟ್ಸ್ ಅ ಶೆಲ್ಟರ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಚಿಲ್ಡ್ರನ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಅ ಗುಡ್ ಸೊಸೈಟಿ ಅಂಡ್ ಅ ಡೀಸೆಂಟ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಅ ಪ್ರೌಡ್ ಲಿವಿಂಗ್ ವೇ ಆರ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ರೆಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟೆಡ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಅಡ್ಮೈರ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಅಪ್ರಿಷಿಯೇಟೆಡ್ ಒಬ್ಬ ತಮ್ಮ ಮಹಾ ಯೋಗಿ ಕುರಾಗಿ ಏನಿಗೆ ನಗತ್ತೆ ಇಕ್ಕ ಮದೇ ಒಬ್ಬ ತಮ್ಮ ಅಪಿ ಧ್ಯಾನ ನಗತ್ತೆ we don't have to go abroad within our country within our companies within our societies within our organizations we have this divide why is it divide kar gana because of your education you divide the language you speak divides us our ability to speak the certain types of languages divide us our schools divide us where we are from divide us don't let that happen start here we are all human beings put it available here i already gave you enough solutions for you to go and make a miracle in your organization make your presence like a god everywhere no matter where you are you are in touch with your project team how about that you can communicate rapidly to millions or hundreds of only your project members using twitter you can use dropbox google drive etc to distribute things don't use this email nonsense don't communicate through email now how do you make decisions as leaders in organizations about ict last part because even though you know the solution even you know the business problem even you know the it strategy all those things you know but how do you make decisions as a leader what's the difference between a leader and a manager one of the fundamental difference is they say that the managers do things right leaders ask you to do the right thing managers do things right leaders ask you to do the right thing so in other words your strategy the vision must be right so here are the basic rules of engagement as a leader when you come to ict decisions number 1 identify the business problem what is your business problem is it because you can get a get the product done take it from here and send it to the market fast is it because you don't have enough resources and you don't know where things are is your assets all over the place you don't know where your machinery is is it the problem with the inventory not you don't know where your inventory stocks levels are is it because your revenue and cost are all over the place you have no clue whether you are making money or not is it because your customers complains you have no idea your mar- marketing department keeps telling everything is fine your sales guys are saying i am selling it but you are losing money what is it or is it a large company that you cannot communicate or is it a project team that you have all over the country and the world that you cannot keep in touch with them what is your business problem define it define it in business terms i don't want any one of you to talk it you don't need to know anything about it actually to become a good business business leader to make decisions on ict figure out your business issue put it in rupees and cents and time and losses and profits that's what you need to think in times in business terms that people understand second make sure you bring in people within the company especially from the front lines to the project this is not about big shots and people with big degrees getting together and decide you decide the business problem go back to the front lines people who do the work people who sell it people who make if it's a tea factory people who make tea if it's a project go to the project field and find out make the questioning that's a second rule double check with your people who do the work whether you have identified the problems right third now that you have identified the problems put it in business terms and got the right collaboration from the right people in the company it has nothing to do with the rank and file now you decide what kind of a solution if it exists in the world if it exists in the world will solve our problems tina dikela one one solution again think about it now if you want to communicate with people all over the country side you need a communication tool and you want rapid communication from them you need a something where they can post this kind of information so think like that you don't have to define the solution you are you tell the features of the solution mona wage lakshana the solution ne ke nikila kole kalila pen antu etcha right now you are ready to talk to anybody third level fourth level technology try to use as much as possible cloud based solutions don't buy servers don't buy software don't buy it admins don't hire it admins don't bring anybody to the it department you don't need it departments 
and don't try to develop software in house google ne gaadala thiyenna adha iyeda na vishipas dene avurudu 10 pala pada karana pasthama company hadunne etoda vishipa pada kiri pala kiyana avurudu kiyeda mathematics how many years how many years but කියද විශිපාට කියන දා 250ක් විතර නේ අවුරුදු 300 ගානක් විතර එක්ස්පීරියන්ස් එකක් එකතු වෙලා තියෙනවා. ඉතින් ඒ එක්ස්පීරියන්ස් එක අපිට ගන්න කාලය නාස්ති කරන්න එපා. අපිට තියෙන ප්‍රොජෙක්ට්ස් ඉවර කරන්න. බිල්ඩින් හදන්න, මැෂින්ස් හදන්න, තේවත් වල නිෂ්පාදනය වැඩි කරන්න. These are the things we have to do. Not building software. You want to build a software join the IFS. Join Millennium. Go there. So for uh, fifth thing when you go to cloud based solutions make sure you analyze the available solutions and experiment with them ask them to give you a free account for some time i don't care whether it is sap or oracle they should be able to give you the free software for one week or one day or something like that ask them to show it show it the way it will function in your organization period any vendor in the world should do that to you they don't want to do that tell them to go home now after you see all of that if you like what you see don't try to have it your way මම මෙහෙම තමයි සීයගේ කාලෙන් වල කරලා තියෙන කියලා කියන්න එපා දෙස් ප්‍රැක්ටිසස් තියෙනවා නේ කපාච්ච කරන්න ඉෆ් යු ලයික් ද වෙන්ඩර් ඉෆ් යු ලයික් ද ඇප්ලිකේෂන් ඇන්ඩ් යු ආර් රෙඩි ටු චේන්ජ් ලාස්ට් තින් චෙක් ද රිස්ක් රිස්ක් මොනවද කොට උඩ යන්න පුළුවන් ක්ලවුඩ් එක කොහෙද තියෙන්නේ ඉන්දියාවේ නැහැ ඇමරිකාවේ තුන්පොළ වල මිරරින් කියන එක වෙනවද ඒ කියන්නේ ක්ලවුඩ් එක දැන් මිරරින් ඉස් ඩිෆරන්ට් ෆ්‍රෝම් බැකප් ගයිස් බැකප් කියන්නේ ගහපු කොපි කරගත්ත ටික අපෝ දෙන්න පුළුවන් හැබැයි the time it ran out of juice or computer broke down you don't have the rest of the data that's the problem with the data mirroring can be what is mirroring everything that you do here is happening here so you are working in sri lanka through a computer that is in madras and that madras server is backed up uh, real time is copied to uh, in one in china and another one in canada so you have three backup of uh, what you call mirroring options you don't even know what i'm talking about you need not to know all you need to know is to ask the vendor the right questions what is your security policy is it 128 bit encryption minimum ek kaha tha website pe a base camp pe dikho website pe kaha tha 128 bit encryption ask the vendor as mirror ask how would you change the rates Five years down the road, because any cloud-based software, the cost should come down. Why? Because number of people goes up, their capital cost same, the rate goes down, just like in any renting model. So those are some of the fundamental things to think as business strategist when you come to solution. You don't need to know IT. You think like a business leader, like they always used to think. Mitigate risk, get the right people involved, understand the business issue properly, understand what you are looking for. and don't be afraid to ask the vendors to come and showcase their product now where is the it in any of those sections no way but what do we do we think just because we are engineers you want to go and show you are <laughs> sorry for saying this stupidity we are not software developers if there's a one why are you working in the irrigation department go join a software company you know in the irrigation department you are an irrigation engineer use the tools get the job done Ladies and gentlemen, it's 10 past seven. I have already used for 20 minutes, but I don't feel like using. I feel like I gave it to you. Do you feel like you gained something? Yes or no? Boru kya ne ba? Exam ke the balan boru. Exam ke the question ne kya hamu maasa karan boru. Maine question ne kya mukatte kila general kila thi. Iti watna kya maasa karan boru. If those of you are online, if you have been listening and couldn't sleep because I yell, uh, that's good. So you are listening. The idea was to take send you home today within about one hour. Uh, Tilak's my lecture, which is about two and a half hours, with something in your hand so you can put it to use. Be paper, come and go. Once you get it, you forget about it. But the knowledge you gain and the thinking pattern and the unlearning you did and the fact that the people are same wherever you go, from Bangalore to Jaipur, Jaipur to Kandy, Kandy to Kolkata, to New York to. Singapore to everywhere we are human beings and we all have same aspirations and desires let's work as a human race all the very best to you let's change this country so that we don't become people who are looking for money to pay interest it's pathetic all of us should be ashamed that's what we do here all of us together are collecting a paycheck we can't even earn enough money to pay the interest fee the country has to pay for the loans we take it's about time that we start producing 
adding value to the country's economy using our brains like engineers that we espouse to be. All the very best in your exam. Have a good evening or a good night.